Today we're doing the nomenclature of ethers, sulfides, and amines. The first section is ethers. Now you'll notice that with ethers there are, there are multiple naming methods, many of which are perhaps not exactly in keeping with IUPAC, but are still necessary to know because of the uh, versatility that it gives you in naming compounds. So you'll see I've named this molecule three different ways. The first and most obvious one is alkyl alkyl ether or dimethyl ether. You can also call it methoxy methane. And lastly, you can name it as though the oxygen were part of the chain. So the chain, the longest continuous chain, so there's three, uh, three long. You count the oxygen as though it were a carbon, so you call it two oxa. You put a prefix oxa to designate the fact that there's an oxygen in the second position, so oxapropane. This one is tert-butyl isopropyl ether, or you could say tert-butoxy isopropane. You could also say isopropoxy tert-butane. And lastly, the one that I favor, because it's the most systematic, is to say 224, here's methyl groups at the second position and the fourth position, a 3 oxypentane. So 224 trimethyl, 3 oxypentane. The longest continuous chain, if this were a carbon atom, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you'd see these as substituents. And this, this tends to be the naming system that's favored if you look in the more recent literature. This one is cyclohexyl methyl ether, or you could say methoxy cyclohexane. And the last example is methyl vinyl ether. You could also say methyl ethanyl. Ethanyl is the IUPAC name for vinyl for a vinyl group, but it's okay to use the vinyl group because it's a trivial name and it tends to fit better, it tends to roll better when you name it. So methyl ethanyl ether. You could also say methoxyethene, and you could name it the way I favor the most is call it. Um, the longest continuous chain is a but. There's a double bond at the third position, so you call it three butene, and the second position is the oxygen. Notice how oxygen has a higher priority, the ether has a higher priority than the um, uh, alkene, so you call it two oxa, three butene. Question 216 asks Low molecular weight ethers and alcohols have very different boiling points yet they possess very similar capability of for dissolving moderate amounts of water. Suggest an explanation for these two phenomena. Well, the, the short answer is hydrogen bonding. Uh, ethers cannot hydrogen bond because they have no hydrogen. However, if you mix them with water, then the water provides the hydrogen for the hydrogen bonding. If you see two ethers, two ether molecules, two diethyl ether molecules, they'll simply stack together and they'll have a hydrophobic interaction, but there's no hydrogen bonding. So the answer I wrote here was ethers do not H bond with themselves due to lack of hydrogen attached to oxygen, but they can hydrogen bond with water molecules. This accounts for the low boiling point of ethers and the ability to bind with water. The next section, we look at sulfides. Sulfides are analogous to ethers, except that the oxygen atom has been replaced with a uh, sulfur atom. So I named one uh, sulfide methyl, 3-methylbutyl, sulfide. If you had two, um, two alkyl groups, you can say alkyl, alkyl, sulfide in the end. In the same way, analogous to uh, alkyl, alkyl, ether. For amines, you choose the longest continuous chain with the nitrogen atom on it. You name that as the skeleton. And then any other substituents attached to the nitrogen atom have to be um, named using N to show that it's attached to the nitrogen atom. So this is a trivial name, tri trimethylamine. The correct IUPAC name for this substance would be N-N-dimethylmethanamine. Because the longest continuous chain, pick one, is one carbon long, and then there's two other methyl groups attached to the nitrogen atom. So NN designates these two methyl groups attached, dimethyl, and then methanamine designates the longest chain. When you have four 
alkyl groups attached to a nitrogen atom is called ammonium. Ammonium compounds form the basis of many uh, antiseptic uh, substances. They're used in uh, detergents for cleaning floors to disinfect floors um, because they tend to disrupt cell membranes of bacteria. The Lewis structure of ammonium chloride is shown here. Notice how the uh, octet is fulfilled and that there are four electrons in possession of nitrogen. So nitrogen ends up having a plus charge because nitrogen likes to possess five electrons in the Lewis structure, as you see here. There's a fulfill, fulfilled octet over here as well, but it's in possession of five of the electrons, two, three, four, five. Remember, bonds count for one, and uh, lone pairs count for two when it comes to possession of the electrons, but uh, in, for octets, either one counts for two, whether bonding or lone pair. Uh, here are a couple of other examples for amines. This is called 2-propanamine, so there's an uh, amino group attached to a 3-carbon uh, chain. So the 2 stands for the fact that it's attached to the second one. Here we have an ethanamine with an ethyl group, so we call it N-ethyl ethanamine. Here we have a cyclohexylamine with two methyl groups, so we say N-N-dimethyl cyclohexanamine. When the nitrogen is included within the ring, then you use aza to show that the nitrogen is part of the ring. And it's a prefix, aza cyclohexane. And in this molecule, uh, we use the designation amino to show that it's a secondary group. It's of lower importance compared to the rest of the molecule, where the alcohol has higher priority. So it's numbered 1, 2, to show that the alcohol group has higher priority. So 2, open bracket, NN, because there's two methyl groups attached to, the, attached to the nitrogen, and the nitrogen itself is attached at the second position. So NN dimethyl amino, close bracket, cyclohexanol. Oh, I should have said pentanol. And more amine nomenclature. 218, I've drawn the molecule. The longest continuous chain is two uh, carbons, and then there are methyl groups at the, at the first position, two methyl groups at the first position, so we call it 1,1 dimethyl. Uh, we don't say N because it's not attached to the nitrogen. It's attached to the carbon, which is attached to the nitrogen. So we simply say 1,1-dimethyl ethanamine. You could also say tert-butylamine because this is actually a tert-butyl group, which we, uh, we, can, uh, we can recognize if we've memorized them. Um, here the longest chain is a prop, uh, propane group attached to uh, nitrogen, so we'd say propanamine. And then you have a methyl group and an ethyl group attached to the nitrogen. So we say N-ethyl and methyl. Notice ethyl precede methyl alphabetically. Here we have a butene amine attached to an amine group. Amine has higher priority than alkene. So we start the numbering from the first carbon attached to the nitrogen. And we say 3-butene amine. Uh, here we have benzene with a nitrogen on it. That's normally called aniline. Benzene with an NH2 on it is called aniline, or you could say benzenamine. So it ends up being called, because there are two ethyl groups attached to the nitrogen, NN diethyl benzenamine, or you could also say NN diethyl aniline. The last question, 219, or second last question, they ask the following Provide an explanation for the low boiling point of NN dimethyl methanamine, this one. or also known as trimethylamine, as compared with the isomeric propanamine, propylamine, this one, and N-methylethanamine, this one. So you see the boiling points. This one boils at 3 degrees. This one boils at 49. This one boils at 35. Uh, again, the short explanation for that is there are no hydrogens here for hydrogen bonding. So because it can't hydrogen bond, it's going to have a lower boiling point. This one has two hydrogens available for, hyd uh, for hydrogen bonding, so it tends to have a higher boiling point. This one only has one hydrogen available for bonding, plus it's got these two bulky groups sticking out, so it's possible that the molecules don't, um, don't easily orient themselves, whereas you could, you could easily envision these ones stacking like Pringles potato chips, so that they have an additional interaction to keep them together. So that one has the highest boiling point. 
And finally we have the nomenclature of haloalkanes. Whenever you have a, a halogen atom attached to an alkane, uh, use, a, use the prefix bromo, chloro, iodo, or fluoro, depending on which halogen you have attached. So here we have an ethyl chain, one, two carbon atoms, remember this is not a carbon atom here, and two methyl groups attached to that. So we'd say one bromo, one, one dimethyl ethane. This is a ethene with three chlorine atoms, uh, two at the first position, one at the second position, so we'd say one, one, two trichloroethene. 